So invasive plants, you all should know. I'm not going to make you an expert. I've only given half an hour. I can't go into my in-depth weed ID, but I want to highlight some species and show you some, oh my God, that's happening in the province kind of pictures to really drive home the issue that you need to be concerned about these weeds. <laughs> So for those of the, you that don't know this weed that's up here, this is orange hawkweed, and it's prohibited noxious. And there's a lot in the province, unfortunately. So I'm gonna cover a little bit about the Alberta Weed Control Act. Uh, I wouldn't get paid if I didn't cover that little aspect of my job. And I'm gonna go into why weeds are so good at being weeds, and then I'm gonna cover some highlighted regulated species. And just so you know, this is not a made up sign. There is a place called Weed. Any suspects, su suspects that you would um, think it's where it's located? BC would be your first choice. Um, it's actually California, the runner up, right? So yeah, California named a place Weed. And I don't think it's my type of weed. I think it was their type of weed. So, so it all started back in 1865 with the Canada Thistle Act. We were like 50 years ahead of Europe, and it was all Canada Thistle drove this. Canada Thistle is not native to Canada, despite its name, it was brought here. And we just have the bad rap by being associated with Canada Thistle, so we got the name. So it all started back, way, way, way back then. Then we fast forward to 2010, where we changed the whole act, the categories, the list, so you guys had to get up to speed on what was being regulated within the province, so you had lots of homework to do. So hopefully, now that it's 2013, hopefully you're up to speed on the act and the list, but if not, I'll just cover it briefly. So what is the Alberta Weed Control Act? Well, it's provincial legislation, and it falls under the Alberta Agriculture and Rural Development Minister. He's ultimately responsible, but he delegates it down to the Pest Surveillance Branch, which I'm a part of. And so the pest surveillance branch has weeds, disease, and insect specialists. So that's where we're all housed and we're monitoring all these pests for the province. But we don't have enough people to enforce this act. <coughs> so we basically delegate all authority down to municipal in weed inspectors and they have all the enforcement power. So it's egg service boards in towns and cities. We support it, but we don't do anything in enforcing. So it provides legal authority to manage plants in agriculture production, natural and riparian. Historically, it was all agriculture, but we found that there's plants coming in and we needed somewhere to put all these other invasive plants. So we included on our act, even though we've expanded the agricultural mandate of the act. It's really just to protect the production and the quality of Alberta for whatever industry or user is its ultimate goal. So there's prohibited noxious and there's noxious. So the prohibited noxious class need to be destroyed. These are really, really bad ones that we're hoping to eradicate completely from Alberta. Um, when we made the list, we thought they were in s the ones that we have here. We thought they were in small enough numbers we could probably easily get rid of them. So that's why they were listed on prohibited because they had a chance to be eradicated. The next class is noxious. These are the types of weeds like Canada thistle that are too widespread. We could never eradicate it from Alberta, but we're hoping to save neighbors from neighbors that have it, that sort of situation. So they need to be controlled, these, these noxious weeds that we've listed. Prohibited noxious have 46, and you might feel a little overwhelmed by this list, but we actually only have about half of this list in Alberta. And most of these are in small quantities, so you're not actually constantly dealing with these, so eradication is feasible. There's 29 noxious, and this is where you'll probably recognize more day-to-day -day ones that you'll come across, the scentless chamomile, common tansy, Canada thistle, those ones are listed here under the noxious. So weed definition. This is what you usually think of when you think, when you talk to anyone about weeds. Dan, good old dandelion pops into their head. And a weed is just anything undesirable, unattractive, troublesome, something growing where it's not wanted. So how do we get from that into a situation like this, where we have counties within the province offering bounties, a $50 reward, 
for these two species, horned hawkweed and spotted knapweed. So how do we get into this situation where we're offering bounties for plants? Well, an invasive weed has to be non-native by our provincial definition, and it has to threaten either the environment, the economy, or society. And society means human health or anything human related. So that's, that's where we jump in to invasive weeds. Just to give you an idea of where we stand as a province, or as a nation, uh, 473 invasive alien species are in Canada. Does that seem like quite a few? Maybe some? It's actually 24% of the national plants that we're working with are all invasive. So Canada is a very good harbor, harboring alien species. <coughs> Alberta has about half, 225 invasive alien species. So we rank about fourth nationally. Uh, Ontario and Quebec have those Great Lake areas, so they are a prime location for invasive plants. And BC has the coastal area, so Alberta is the fourth runner up. So why are weeds so good at being weeds? Well, they occupy very different habitat, habitats, right? Uh, anybody that grows horticultural plants knows zones are trump. People like, or plants like specific tolerances to temperature, sunlight, all those things. So there's weeds growing from Mexico all the way to the Arctic Circle. Very, very um, intolerant or tolerant of any, any situation. You have Canada thistle growing out of a badger hole. You have ca uh, dandelion growing out of a curb. Very, very easily um, grown out of anything, right? Weeds easily adjust. This is good old Sipus chamomile. Anyone that's ever worked with this one knows if you mow it, say, about this height, it's smart enough that it will actually flower just below that mower height to get that seed production going. So anybody that's worked with scentless chamomile, this is why it's such a beast to work with. Weeds easily reproduce. This is purple loose strife. One plant can reproduce 2.5 million seeds every year. That, that's huge in the weed world. So that's no wonder why we're dealing with that one still. Um, some weeds have incredible longevity. This is common mullion. It's on the noxious list. And it will survive in the soil for up to 100 years. That's, that's phenomenal for weeds. Usually they're about 20, 20 years. This one's 100. Weeds seem unstoppable. This is not weed. We have three types on the prohibited noxious list. And if you were to Google not weed, you would come up with many of these pictures where it is growing through baseboards on the inside of a house, through foundation, through asphalt, and through brick. A big threat to infrastructure. Um, this one was too good of an example to not to show, but it's not regulated by the Act. But this is common groundsel and has extremely short generation time in that it can go from seed to seed production, like a seedling, to seed production in only five weeks. So it's actually doing multiple generations in every summer, for at least four in a summer. Usually you need female and male plants to get together and reproduce. Um, this is Russian knapweed, and it will just send out those lateral stems and up, out shoot a rhizome, um, a plant, wherever it feels that it has enough resources to accommodate that. So it doesn't even need the male and females to get together. It reproduces all of its own. Most have effective seed dispersal methods. This is hound's tongue up here. Dandelion, not regulated, but a very good wind dispersal. And it's a little faded out here, but there's burdock all stuck in this horse's mane. And then this is puncture vine that will actually stick in shoes, bike tires, bare feet, if you so happen to happen to walk by it. So these are very, very effective means in getting that seed to disperse away from the parent plant. And most people that you say, oh, you work with weeds, they say, oh, it's just as easy as just pulling a weed, right? You can just get rid of it by pulling it. <laughs> well, anybody that's worked with weeds knows that that's not the case, right? This is yellow toad flax has those rhizomes, hard to just pull. This is baby's breath. The root is about the same width as an arm, if not wider. And then this is a schematic of Canada thistle. Canada thistle is like that iceberg. So you see a little bit what's going on above. There's tons, 
tons of biomass underneath Canada thistle. Weeds address their own needs. This is wild oats. And it needs to be in the soil to germinate. But usually, the seed just happens to fall on the ground unless someone comes along and happens to work it into the ground. So it's overcome its need for someone to put it in the ground and it's developed this appendage that responds to changing moisture conditions and it will actually corkscrew itself down into soil. So it doesn't even need us anymore. Uh, most crops and weeds are capable of this thing called the lelopathy and it basically just has the ability to produce chemicals that deters other plants from competing with water and nutrients right near its root zones or plants. And some do this dead or alive. It doesn't need to be necessarily living. And most major crops actually exhibit this trait as well. Stuff like potato, barley, soya bean, rice, they all have these sort of uh, capacity to do this as well as weeds. Often armed or toxic. This one you'll notice the glove, giant hogweed. Uh, if you're working with this plant, not known to be in Alberta yet, but if you're working with this one and you get the, the sap on your skin, it makes you highly sensitive to UV radiation and you'll actually blister quite fast. And then there's yellow star thistle. Uh, no expl explanation really needed. Nobody wants to touch this one. Those are about an inch long. And this one is tansy ragwort, which is highly toxic to livestock. And while most animals don't eat the toxic plants, they're not smart enough to know not to eat this one, so that it could be devastating to the province if it was here. So if you take anything home from me today, I want you to really drive home the fact that prevention <coughs> is really, really your best bet on any weed that's coming into the province. So you need to scrutinize everything you're working with, whether it's at home, at, at a project, at work, your gravel, your seed, your soil, any substrate you're bringing in, even equipment can harbor weed seeds. So you need to really take onus with that and take a car wash, use a pressure washer between sites. Um, it's really your easiest and most economical method of preventing weeds. Why is prevention the key? Well, they've done some economic analysis and they, say, uh, they found that every dollar we spend on prevention programs, we're actually getting $100 back. So it's money well spent. Previously, the government was usually down in the, the bottom two um, stages, not getting a whole lot of money return. So it's your, in your best bet. Damage by and control of weeds and crops and pastures has been esti estimated to be $2.2 billion annually. Now I throw up this stat because it's hard to quantify environmental impacts in the province. So agriculture has a really good grasp of what weeds are actually costing their industry. So just on an agricultural perspective alone, it's $2.2 billion every year. So you can just imagine the environmental costs once that's factored in. So I just want to go quickly through some prohibited noxious and noxious weeds. Meadow hawkweed. We put these on the act as prohibited noxious because we knew they were in the province, but we thought they were in low acreages until we got everybody up to speed on what they were looking for, and then we found thousands and thousands of acres. So we have lots of work cut out for us to in eradicating this one. So it looks very undescript, right? It looks like a narrow-leaved hawksbeard, beard, and that's probably what's been harboring it as unidentifiable. It's been just written off as an early top spirit. But it's got hairy leaves, hairy stem, and hairs on the bracts underneath the flowers. It very much looks like dandelion. And this is a picture of the Crow's Nest Pass. And all that yellow is meadow hawkweed. So it reproduces by rhizomes, stolons, seed, root fragments. And so it quickly, quickly <coughs> forms mats. A close relative is orange hawkweed. This one is um, popular as an ornamental one, but it's often in the same area. Orange and meadow are often found together. Um, very, very similar species. Hairy leaves, hairy stem, hairy underneath the flowers, but obviously the orange flower sets it apart. 
And this is where we're finding it. And we found this in a grazing reserve. <coughs> it's, it's quickly formed a mat. Spotted knapweed. I'm sure many of you have heard knapweed. Um, Montana is spending millions of dollars on knapweeds. We do have spotted knapweed in the province. Normally, it's a southern species. And with knapweeds, what you want to concentrate on is the bract, this structure underneath the flower, and it looks like a black <coughs> eyelash in the spotted knapweed. So that gives it the spotted knapweed. And so it was predominantly a southern species, and we weren't too worried about it centrally until we found it in Edmonton in a trucking yard. And so it's, it's gone everywhere around this trucking yard and who knows where it's gone from here to anywhere, right? So never assume weeds should be where you, you think they should be, right? They can hop anywhere. Nodding thistle, another southern species, but it is kind of sporadically coming up into central Alberta. Um, looks like Canada thistle, but on steroids, it gets taller, the head flower is bigger, um, it's got wing-like appendage on the stem, it looks really thorny, you'd never be able to grab up on the stem because of all these appendages on the stem. At maturity, it will nod over, that's where it gets its name, the nodding thistle. And this is just the location down south where it's predominantly found, but we are finding sporadic locations, so you never know where it's going to pop up. Calgary has lots. Uh, this is plumus thistle, another prohibited noxious. Looks very similar to nodding, and only that this flower head's quite a bit smaller than the nodding. And the scary one with this one is that we have found it in the middle of the Bow River, right near Calgary, with no other known locations. So it's in the middle of Alberta, on a river, so who knows where else it could be. So alarming location. And there's just a silhouette of the, the tall thistle. It's quite tall, actually, when you find it. Oriolism. This one's coming in from both sides. BC and Saskatchewan have lots of it. And we found a fair amount coming in in the Wainwright County. Fairly undescript plant. Probably looks like stinkweed, if you were driving or walking by it, you probably wouldn't give it a second look. But it's very, very hairy, has distinct, those distinct uh, seed pods here. And when the seeds fall, the partitions still remain in there. And this is where we're finding it in Wainwright. Thankfully, this site does not look like this anymore. They've, they've got on it, they sprayed it. They did phenomenal work out in Wainwright to get rid of it. But it came in from Saskatchewan, it's right on the border. In Wainwright. Purple loose strife. Uh, Alberta Agriculture and Ducks Unlimited had a beautiful eradication program in the 90s, working phenomenally. Uh, money ran out in the late 90s. Uh, there were still sites that weren't eradicated and they've been allowed to sort of go. So, this is what we're dealing with in, in Wabamin Lake specifically, but there's other locations in the province. And so, we still have our work out, cut out for us. And we're scared as a province by anything that's aquatic because herbicides usually are not an option. Um, you need special permits and anything like, even to pull in a waterway, you need special permits and stuff. So aquatic ones get us very, very nervous when they're present, so. Himalayan balsam, you may recognize this as an ornamental. Um, there probably isn't a city or a town in Alberta that doesn't have at least one of these. Very, very popularly loved as an ornamental. Um, it's got, it's an impatient. You'll see the genus impatient. So it's got these exploding seed pods. If you touch it when it's ripe, it'll explode. And kids have much fun with it. <laughs> the scary thing is it's, it's getting out into drainage systems. So I don't know if this one kind of washed out here, but all this right here in the front is Himalayan balsam. And this is just outside of Bonneville in their Jesse Lake, just outside of town. So they went in and <coughs> pulled it, and it left nothing, right? So this will outcompete cattails. And cattails are fairly good at competing, so this one's fairly scary. Flowering Rush is another one of those aquatic ones. It was sold as a pond plant up until the act came out in 2010. 
And this is a picture out of Montana. This is all flowering rush. And we have seven locations in the province. So we have lots of work cut out for us. But it's very pretty. It's got that pink, pink flower up there. Triangular um, stem, usually. And this is a picture of a sturgeon, sturgeon River in St. Albert. A couple plants there, and it goes for about six kilometers. And then this is all flowering rush in uh, Isle Lake, which is out west of Evan, Edmonton by Gainford. And there's another clump on the other side of the boat launch that I'm standing in. So we have lots, lots in this lake to deal with. Garlic mustard. This one we put on the act and thought, oh, it won't even survive in Alberta. And surprise, we found it in Edmonton. All these plants are garlic mustard in the River Valley in Edmonton. So we now have three locations that we're dealing with, two in Edmonton, one in St. Albert. And the concerning thing with this is once it's in an urban setting like Edmonton, who knows has, who has pick, picked it up and taken it home with them, right? Um, settlers like to use this for garden greens. It tastes garlicky. So who knows has picked it up. So we're watching out for it. Knotweed, this is the one that I showed you that was busting through foundations. And it cost $110 billion at the London Olympics to get rid of it because they found it in their, the, the aquatic center that they were building. And they knew that if they didn't get rid of it completely, it was going to bust through their swimming pool that they were building. So they had to spend a lot of money in getting rid of this one. And we thought, oh, we'll put it on the act, but we don't have it, right? No. We found it. Uh, this is Troshu's Arboretum had it. And we have another location in the province. So we are quickly trying to get these out. They're actually refusing mortgages in the United Kingdom with this plant because they know that it will bust through foundations. So they're refusing mortgages on any plant. That, so we're, infrastructure is the major threat with this one. Pale yellow iris, another ornamental, has distinctive brown markings on the throat. That will tell you distinctively which one you're working with. That's pale yellow iris. Unfortunately, this picture is from Alberta. But uh, to our benefit, it was a man-made lake in a town, so we could uh, work with it. And it's about 10, 10 feet thick all the way around, because they planted it there 30 years ago. So thankfully, it wasn't going anywhere. But they had two locations like this. So quickly on to noxious, scentless chamomile. Everyone loves to hate this one. And I want you all to take notice of the stage up here in the top center, the two to four leaf stage. That's where most herbicides are registered for this plant. So if you're spraying it here and not getting the control you expected, there's a reason. <laughs> and it's not resistance. It's that, that pesky low leaf surface area that's not taking up very much herbicide. So you need to hit it when it's young and vulnerable. There's the flowers, the pretty white daisy-like flowers. Some people like to have it in their gardens. And this is just a provincial map. We're working on getting maps for all these species. So we have some ready to go. These ones are still being tweaked as we speak. But you can sort of see the hot spots in the province. Oxide daisy, a, a close, confused species. But once you look at the leaves, very, very different from scentless camomile. And there's the hot spots for the province. White cockle. This one's quite common in pastures and rangeland. Has the two different flowers, the male and the female. If you count the veins around here, this is male because it has 10, and female has 20. Only the females have seeds. And there's the seeds. And if you sent me this picture to do a weed ID, I could tell you without a doubt that it was white cockle, even at senescence because it's got 10 teeth across the top. That's distinctively white cockle. And there's your hot spots for central Alberta, you mainly with a little bit up in the Peace region. Tall buttercup, this one's poisonous to livestock, but usually it's not an issue because they don't like to graze it. But that's mainly the reason why we're trying to uh, control it from neighbors. And the hot spots, it likes, likes sort of that foothill region 
all down down the side of the province. Likes wetter areas. Leafy spurge. This one has that milky latex if you break the stem. But it can irritate skin, so you need to, you know, be careful with it. Here's a picture out of uh, Edmonton, in, right in the heart of Edmonton, along the railway, all trickling down. Sea of yellow. I don't have a map for that one yet. Common tansy. This is another popular ornamental. You can see it in the winter. It stays upright, and you can see the, the shape of it quite easily. Mostly in central Alberta, but quite um, widespread, sporadic populations here and there. Um, doing very well at spreading within the province. Canada thistle, everyone knows Canada thistle, um, but maybe you don't know, only 10% comes from seed. Most of it actually comes from vegetative little pieces of roots. And the reason you can tell the difference is these have cotyledons, so this one came from seed, this one just came from a root piece. Does very, very well. It can go down six meters in, in root zone, which is quite phenomenal. And leafy spurge actually is nine meters, so it's out surviving any drought the province can throw at it. So does very well. And there you go, there's a beautiful map, right? And you remember back we started all we started with this one in 1865. Has legislation really worked for this one? Well, maybe if you're a neighbor and you don't have it, you're thankful, but yeah, it's, it's done very well at infiltrating the province. And if you overlay this on human, distur or human population, quite connected with human disturbance. Burdock, this is the inspiration for Velcro. Mm -hmm. There's three types, and we have three, all three types in the province. There's woolly, greater, and lesser or common. And they all look vegetatively very the same, so we just included them all on the list so you don't have to <coughs> differentiate which one you're working with. They're all noxious. And there's the hot spot down southern Alberta, but there is the odd lo lo location on the right, other ways. Um, common baby's breath. Remember, this is the one with the huge root that you can't pull. Breaks off in uh, maturity. Blows against the fence lines, so you often find it along fence lines. And railways, likes, likes to have this one. Common mullion, this was the 100 year viability one. Super, super soft leaves, and then it bolts up this huge long flower stalk that can be up to two meters. And every time I find this one, it's along a railway or gravelly. Like it likes that gravelly ballast from railways or gravel pits. And there is a map, and this, this picture is out of Fort McLeod, a little nice little infestation along, along the railway. There is a railway just off to the side there. Yellow clematis, this is an ornamental. It's very pretty and everybody likes it, but we're finding, people are sending me pictures of it overtaking trees, um, taking over hillsides, and it is sporadically kind of all down central Alberta and the southern from Edmonton to Calgary even down past so it's everywhere. Dame's Rocket. This one's gaining quite a bit of publicity in the US and we have it here in Alberta. It's either purple or white flowers, very fragrant when it's in flower and it likes the little moist low-lying areas so these are just two populations. One was in Calgary and one was just outside of Edmonton but we're having sporadic populations the same as U.S. So what can you do? Well, you're here today. Hopefully you're going to educate yourself a little bit more. I brought some books. If you're really keen on some weed ID, you want to freshen up your skills, come get a book before cut break. And hopefully you're not growing or buying or helping spread these plants. And if you do see any of these, uh, specifically the prohibited noxious, We've set up a toll-free line for you to call, 310-2777, and you can report weeds, diseases, insects, and even bee pests to this because it goes to the pest surveillance branch, which I'm a part of, so we all um, help maintain this number, and we'll find out whose jurisdiction it is and get after them to do some control. So I'm usually a downer, 
and everybody gets depressed after they see me. <coughs> so I'm, I'm going to throw in this video and it's going to highlight agriculture as an industry and our, our strengths and hopefully you enjoy it. So I'm just going to take five minutes and throw this video.
So I wish I could take credit for that video, but it's Alberta Treasury Branch is actually who made it. So as stewards, whether you're in agriculture or not, hopefully you learned a little bit from that video, like we are big in beer. <laughs> Woo! Good for Alberta. And honey, who knew? Irrigation, potatoes, oh, the list goes on and where we're big. So um, hopefully we can connect together, despite, irregardless of our industry, and uh, get on those invasive plants for the province.